Hi there, welcome back to Ask Amy. I have a question today from Sue. Sue says, I'm trying to get my head around how this whole concept of me being separate from my thoughts and emotions works with someone like myself who was traumatized from my birth. My mother was a narcissistic, narcissistic alcoholic and I spent the first three years of life in children's homes. I had an EMDR session many years ago and the repressed scenario that arose was me at 14 months of age being rushed to the hospital after being brutally hurt by my mother. The scene in that memory is of me regaining consciousness briefly and feeling and thinking, oh, I'm going home, leaving my body, and there was much joy and happiness, and then feeling my dad begging me to stay. I stayed, obviously. However, I did it for my dad and have most of my life been driven by looking after others and not really valuing myself. Hence, as I'm aging, I'm 70 years old, occasionally I felt suicidal. I can understand my story, she says, but how does the body deal with the body memory as I work on seeing myself as separate from my story, thoughts, emotions? Um, okay, so a few things I want to share, Sue. One thing, I'm not sure I would work on seeing yourself as separate from the story, thoughts, and emotions. I, I mean, that's just a... It's just a concept. It's just an, a, a way of, of seeing things that can be helpful at a certain point because we can, you know, if we're feeling totally overwhelmed by feeling and thought and there's a sense of pushing it away and, and trying to not feel it and all of that, it, it can be helpful at that point. And maybe this will be helpful for you. You just try this on and see. It can be helpful to just conceptualize. This is just a concept. It's just a way of thinking. To think about, okay, I'm I'm okay, and I am health. I am fine. I am I am resilience, and all this stuff that's being experienced is not me. Meaning, I can welcome it. It can move through. It's like it's the sky metaphor, right? I'm the blue sky. The weather is the weather. I can open up and feel all the weather. The weather isn't the sky. The weather's always safe from the sky all of that. So there is a time and place and a point for each of us, I guess, where maybe that feels really helpful. Um, so you just check and see if that feels helpful for you. But the way you're asking it, and it may right now, but the way you're asking it in your question is like, how do I see that? How do I see that? And I would not push it. I would not force yourself to see that. I would not say that's necessarily even something that you need or would be helpful for you to see at this point. In the big picture, again, because that's just a concept. It's like a, it's a, uh, it's a handhold. It's something that kind of feels good as a concept and can be super helpful at a certain point. But then when you get to that point, you see, oh no, there's no separation at all. So it's not true. It's not true that there's a Sue that's separate from all this feeling and emotion the sense of Sue, I would say, is the feeling and emotion. It, it, but we don't have to go there quite yet. But just see that thing about me being separate. It's not a truth. It, it's just a way of kind of viewing things that can feel helpful and like it allows us to feel. And that's the whole point of everything. The whole point, I think, of all of this when it comes to moving through some of this stuff is letting it in. Whatever makes it easier and and allows us to feel like we can lean into what's here, say yes instead of no to what's showing up. See that it's not a problem, that it's not a mistake, that nothing was wrong in all of this. Whatever facilitates that is what is ultimately going to be super helpful. So starting to think about and see the whole trauma thing in a slightly different way. And I know this can be really tough. And if this doesn't feel, if this doesn't resonate for you right now, no problem at all. Just wait until it does. Just kind of do what makes sense in the moment. See what makes sense in the moment until you kind of see this. But even thinking of all of that trauma and the, your story and all of that stuff that you went through as something horrible and inherently painful that shouldn't have happened, that was a traumatic thing. Yes. I mean, in a certain level and the, in the relative, of course, that's how it's going to look, right? And that's how it's going to feel. But starting to kind of graduate from that a little bit too. And seeing that right now, today, all you ever have is what's arising right now. So holding on to that story of this is the thing that happened to me oftentimes starts to become not helpful at all. Like it kind of becomes imprisoning. Now that's not denying it. And it's not denying that something that arises right now today 
in the land of time might have come from that. So there are things that are learned. There's contractions that happen and that are learned and that become kind of imprinted in a sense, become our habit, basically. Our body mind forms these habits when there are traumas. So those habits might remain, but that's a little bit different. Like I want you to look toward the habit that shows up right now today in real time rather than the story of this is a thing that happened to me and I need to heal it because I think that's outdated. This thing that happened to any of us that we need to go heal, that's, it feels very real and very true from a certain perspective. But again, we can kind of graduate from that and, and see it in a bigger, broader way. And then it, that leaves us just kind of being in what's here now, rather than a story of years and years and years ago and trying to fix something that we don't even know how to fix. We, there's no way to fix it. There is no fix for life because ultimately there was no problem with life. There's just stuff that happen. There are just habits that form. And the way that we can be with what's arising now is to say yes to and lean into and be with what's arising right now. So if to the extent that there are emotions, now we don't know, we don't know, we don't have to know, we can't know if they're from this trauma or not. That's a theory. That's your thought about it. That's fine. But if you feel suicidal in a moment right now today, or you feel sad or depressed or, or like you need approval or you need to go make someone else happy or whatever that stuff is, again, the mind will say, oh, that's because of all this stuff that happened. But, but how do we know that? And does it really matter? What happens when the mind is tying all of this now to some trauma from 50 years ago, or in your case, 70 years ago, is it leaves us feeling super hopeless. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? How do I go back and fix that? Well, you don't have to go back and fix that. All there is is right now. So can you feel a feeling of sadness right now? Of course you can. Feel it. Do that. Don't let your head hijack this and say, oh, how do I fix my trauma? No, there's no trauma to fix. That's a thought right now. There's just feeling right here, right now feel suicidal right now in this very second? Okay, feel that. Lean into that energy. Where do you feel that? What's going on physically? What what are the sensations? Like, go into that here now in that level. Now, the mind always is wanting to come in and make sense of what's being felt. And it'll say, oh, you're suicidal because you've only cared for other people because of your trauma. Just see if you can recognize that as the story that's arising right here, right now. Not a true story, just a thought, a mind trying to make sense of the sensation and say, okay, well, I don't know how to fix a trauma from 70 years ago. So I'm going to sit here in a feeling because this is here now. This is real right now. I'm going to feel what's here right this very second and not worry about fixing all this stuff that I can't possibly fix. There's a reason that we don't know how to heal traumas very well from years and years ago because there, there is no fix to that stuff. But there is this ability to be in what is here in this very second always. Now, again, kind of circling back to your thing, to your question of how do I see myself as separate? If it helps you, it only if, if it helps you to imagine yourself the sky and the feelings or the weather or whatever works for you, great. There may be a sense of a separation and an ability to feel and lean into what's arising when you conceptualize it that way. Awesome. If that's helpful, go with that until it isn't helpful anymore. But don't force that because that's not, that's not ultimately true. There is no separation. You are, we all are, everything's just this. <laughs> it's, we are the feelings, we are the thoughts. And we are none of that stuff. It's all just what's here and what's arising. So again, that, that might not feel right or resonate quite yet, and that's totally fine. But don't don't force that separation. Just see what, what whatever allows you to feel into what's arising right now without trying to fix it in a story, without a thought that's trying to fix things or change things, fully saying yes to whatever is here now. Come on in. Welcome. You can be here. I will feel you. That's where you want to look. That's really the only place I can see to look because it's the only thing that's real. It's what's here right now in real time, not in some imaginary time in a retold story in our head about it. It's the only thing that's real. So it's really the only place to go and the only only direction to look in. So I hope that's helpful, Sue. Let me know what you hear in this. I know you've been diving into the podcast and all of this a lot. 
Um, and a lot of this is very paradoxical. Again, certain things are concepts and those concepts are helpful to a point and then they're not. So don't force anything, but keep looking toward what resonates and, and let me know what you heard in this video. So thanks for sending your question and uh, send your questions, anyone, everyone, to Ask Amy at the little school of big change .com, and I will speak to them each Monday. Have a great week, everyone.